Thank you so much, uh, you both, for being here. Uh, let's start with you, David. Uh, given kind of what Steve just outlined, given the, the nuance involved in today's jobs report, what do you think this overall means for the markets, especially as we kind of think two steps ahead to what the Fed is going to do in a couple weeks? Uh, I think it's, it's positive for the bond market. I think it's particularly positive for the equity market because what it really means is we've got sort of more runway for a soft landing here. It doesn't mean we're out of the woods in terms of recession, but what it does mean is the Federal Reserve doesn't need to be quite so aggressive to deal with inflation. Inflation pressures within the labor market are actually easing. That three tenths of a percent increase in wages was, you know, pretty moderate. And seeing 786,000 people come back into the labor force, that really helps. So what you're seeing is the economy is adapting to this weird economy we have. It's actually adapting. People are coming into the labor force. Momentum is slowing down the economy overall, but the jobs market remains strong. And so we could just get away with this in terms of avoiding recession with inflation coming down. So I think overall it is very good news. Lindsay, do you think this moves the needle at all in terms of toward 50 basis points for a hike versus 75 basis points? Well, I certainly think it sets it up for the possibility of a more benign rate increase uh, come September. As David mentioned, th this really is the best of both worlds for the Fed. It does indicate a still solid assessment of labor market conditions as they've continued to tout, giving them cover to continue to raise rates. But at the same time, it does move us towards those softening conditions that the Fed has deemed appropriate or necessary in order to rein in longer term inflation. And as we see wages moderate, this is not going to move the needle in and of itself, but it sets us up for looking out to those inflation, uh, those August inflation reports, should those come in weaker than expected, showing two consecutive months of cooling price pressures, I do think that will be enough to force market expectations back to a more benign 50 basis point increase or maybe even less. And of course, then forcing the Fed to capitulate to a slower increase come September. David, um, I hate to ask you to put percentages on it, but I'm going to ask you to. I mean, I'm just curious as to how much, in your opinion, this has increased your percentage chance of the Fed being able to engineer that soft landing? I think, I think it does, you know, I'd, I'd call it about a 50-50 as to whether we avoid a recession overall. We, what we, we don't need any shock. One shock will put us in, in, into, into the drink here. Uh, but if we can avoid it, I think, you know, as Lindsay says, this does make it easier for the, for the Fed. I still think what the Fed will do is go 75 basis points in September, but they can use data like this. And I think, you know, not only do I think inflation is going to be flat in August, I'm now thinking it's going to be flat in September also. So we get three mild inflation reports back to back to back. So I think that's what we're going to get. And I think that allows the Federal Reserve to pivot its messaging. So at the press conference on September 21st, Jay Powell may well say, you know, we went 75 basis points today, but there is better news on inflation. So we think that the next increase could be milder. And I think that would be seen as finally the pivot that, that the equity market's been waiting for. Lindsay, against these kind of unprecedented macro uh, backdrop signs, bonds and stocks have been declining largely in tandem recently. And uh, there was a, uh, you know, a classic 60-40 portfolio down 19 percent this year. What's the best way to achieve diversification in this kind of environment? Well, I, I think right now, in response to the equity market and the bond market moving in the same direction, it's more a reflection of investors violently ping-ponging to one data point in one direction or, or the other. And, and as Steve said earlier in his assessment, one data point should not move the needle, should not cause investors to reposition their portfolios, nor should it cause the Fed to reposition their longer-term path, excuse me, their pathway for policy. So right now, I, I do think this is a reflection of an overreaction as opposed to a, a more rational investor scenario.